Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clive JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It is Monday, June the 28th, the last Monday of the month of June. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 103, 103. And tonight, we have the whole gang here. We have our missing artist friend, Diane. She's with us. And we got Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Dan. Hello, everybody. Thank you both for joining me and keeping me uh, from being so lonely each week. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we are, we're able to uh, keep each other inspired and motivated to uh, create some fantastic art. For our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, You'll see some uh, information links there, and I decided to uh, select the uh, webinar from the class that we, all three of us, had taken with Paul Klein, and it was episode seven of his uh, 10-week class where he talks about uh, alternative uh, methods for an artist other than galleries. Uh, he's always famous for, uh, say, in a uh, uh, that the art a the art market or an art career is a little like little villages, and uh, so for our listeners, I thought you that would find uh, very interesting because he uh, he brings up some very interesting ideas, some of them that uh, we've implemented in a, in, in a small way. Before I uh, share my specific area that I have found to be successful. Let's let Diane uh, maybe share something. Uh, what what kind of direction or uh, art village are, are you pursuing? Well, um, I've gone the gallery route mostly, I guess. Um, but I've done like plain air paintings. So a lot of times people come up and buy paintings right off the easel from you. Um, or at least learn about you. And I always have business cards or something with me to direct them to, you know. So if they are interested in seeing more of my work, and I, I think that's like a big thing is anytime you have any, have any opportunity to talk with people and then, you know, you, you get in the conversations, people ask you what you do or whatever, and you can, you should always have your business cards or, um, you know, information to give them so that you can direct them to find you later. Like, because you can only tell them so much in a, you know, five minute conversation. <laughs> um, so that's been pretty much um, what I've been doing, I guess. 
other than the gallery stuff. And I mean, I've been going, I do shows and that kind of thing too. So. So when you said you do your plain air painting, what, you, do you set up in a uh, public area or a, uh, like a art fair area or someplace? Or? Um, well, I, I, I'll either set up sometimes. I mean, it just depends on what I feel like painting, but I belong to a group, a local group here that we go out every week and paint together. And they usually um, find locations for us. Sometimes it's on private property. Sometimes it's at um, local parks or um, arboretums or something like that. And there's always people walking through those kind of places. So not so much the private property, but the, um, you know, the public parks and things. Okay. So. That's interesting. Really, I didn't know you did that. See, I learned something brand new. <laughs> Constance. What's, uh, what's your village you consider your village, you know, for, for creating your art? And if you don't say it, I'll say, I'll say it. Cause I, I know it already, but for our listeners. So what do you think my village is? I mean, I don't really consider myself to have a village other than Etsy. And I don't really sell the artwork on Etsy. I sell the jewelry on Etsy jewelry. and I sell the artwork on daily paintworks. Your jewelry. Your jewelry is a form of art. Your jewelry. Yeah, it is, but I do like to paint. Um, I know you're but, transitioning into painting, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, your jewelry, you pretty much got yourself established in, you know, in that. Yeah. So uh -huh. I have a Facebook page for the jewelry and I also have a Facebook page for the paintings uh, and then Instagram. So I do have social media set up for both, for both uh, the jewelry and the artwork. I started painting again at the beginning of 2020. Um, was it? That's when I started painting again, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Just before the 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 pandemic pandemic, and then that kind of slowed everything down. You know. It did. Yeah. I got yeah. I got sick in January I, with uh, COVID. Um, Will and I both got it, and then. We didn't know we had that, but that's what the doctor said we had. Uh, then I, I got sick again in September when I got a shingle shot from the shingle shot. And I've been kind of down a while with that. But um, I'm starting, I think I'm starting to get it back, back a handle on it. Um, so I want to start getting painting again. Yeah. Start working in the studio again, get things back rolling. Well, I know your history is outstanding because the two uh, of the three of us, Constance and I, I have met personally. She's had, uh, I've met her two different times when she would attend, had it set up at a uh, fair or a show in uh, Oklahoma City. Yeah, I do like the fair route and the show route, but I'm <laughs> I'm 70. And I'm gonna have to need. I'm gonna need some help. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna go about getting help, but I don't know if I can maybe get some help. Maybe somebody from a college or something to help me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't ever had help, but you know, I'm yeah. 70 now. <laughs> it's getting a little harder to haul that stuff in and out of the building. <laughs> no. So tables and tents and. Yeah, and it's it's getting harder every year to haul that stuff in and out of the out of the buildings and and do it, you know. So uh, Will works like six days a week, and it's not going to slow down for him now. So I'm going to need some help to. I just I'll, I'll have to figure out how to get that done. Um, Never the uh, the the discussion, you know, uh, what Paul Klein was saying was as an alternative, not necessarily uh, selling only selling your art through a gallery. And he wasn't exact. He wasn't talking exclusively visual art, painting. I mean, he was talking sculpture, any kind of artwork. And your jewelry is a form of artwork. So that it is, yeah. I had not ever thought about selling jewelry through. Now, when I was in Florida, I sold jewelry through a little small bead shop, but um, I ended up not. Ended up moving it back out of the bead shop for some reasons. Yeah. Um, and I did sell some artwork in a art gallery in <clears throat> Florida, and uh, and then 
I, I put seven paintings in and I got three paintings back and I did not get paid for those paintings. So I've been very protective of my artwork since then. I know I'm not a great painter, but you know, it's kind of hard to put seven paintings in a gallery and only get three back and then not get paid for the other four. <laughs> so I really haven't approached a gallery in a very long time. <laughs> well, um, after, uh, you know, attending that course and up to that point, you guys probably couldn't tell in the video, but I was very depressed because all they talked about was, uh, relationships and going out and meeting gallery people and curators and studio visits and everything that which I was not capable of doing maybe someday, but all the, all that went through my mind was these things cost money. I don't have the money. I was living on a, I'm living, I'm still living on a very, very low scale economic budget, you know? And well, it really doesn't cost that much to walk through a, a gallery on an opening. You just walk through there and say hi to the, everybody and say good show and walk out. I mean, the, I've been, I've, I did that a few times, but then my car got where it was not all that great, but I did replace my car so I could go again. I just haven't, ben, haven't. What I'm getting, getting around to was those, all those things was going through my mind and everything. And so even I was energized to start an art career after the course was done, but then I really had to do some serious thinking and everything. And then I came across, you know, online galleries. And I put some of the links of some of the galleries I've worked with and uh, uh, that are online for, our, for, our, for any of our artists, listeners who are not in a, in a situation to where they can go the traditional route. This is when Paul Klein talks about you got to find your village. This was my village that, yeah. I, that I found. And when I started out with... The first, I think Diane and, and Constance knows this story. Uh, the the first, uh, I would say, maybe six, maybe seven, seven submissions to galleries were turned down flat. I paid the money. I paid the $20 application fee, the $16, the $30 application fee, and crickets. Not a fly, nothing. I was even more depressed then. Oh, my, you know. I just, crickets are horrible, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is terrible. Crickets are terrible. These people, you know, this is a scam. And I was really, you know, uh, getting up. You have to get used to hearing crickets because. I toughened up and I submitted one more time. And then I got accepted. <laughs> then I started finding others. <laughs> and I started. Submitting. And I've. Since since about September of uh, 2019, about every month, I usually end up submitting anywhere between five and six uh, online gallery con jury contests, and I specifically picked uh, international because I'm going to go up against the world. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, the uh, I look over the gallery to make sure that they have a, a they or predominantly representational art because there's no sense in me submitting representational art to an abstract only, <laughs> you know, and that's another story too. I even want, but anyhow, in conclusion, I forged my own path, these people. And I established with, when Paul talks about a relationship, when you continually submit to a gallery, even if you get rejected, and come back, they get to know you, they get to see you. And they said, well, maybe, you know, let's give this guy a chance. And that's all I can, you know, plus, the reason why I was rejected had nothing to do with me. Uh, they were looking for, maybe I submitted two uh, forest scenes and they had too many forest scenes and they wanted a seascape, you know, or, you know, there's all different, different reasons. And but, the judge may not have wanted what you had submitted that time. Yeah. You know, it depends on the judge doing it. You know, they get different judges in at different times. Between all the different contests that I've been submitting, it missed me. And I don't always, just because I pick out six, I don't always 
get all six accepted. It's a rare moment of all six contests. I, I'm accepted into all six galleries. That's that jury shows. That's a rarity. That's that's only happened maybe two or three times. I just about always get two or three rejections. And there are some that are have fees. Others are free. Yeah, you know, like I didn't put the link, but there's a Faso uh, bow brush contest. That's uh, that's free for one submission. You know, every month. Then you know, you just prepare your your uh, art and uh, submit it. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. But anyhow, all said and done, I think I've I think I'm up to about thirty awards now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I can't say that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, and I didn't realize how many I had until I went and uh, had prepared an application for a, uh, a grant. And part of the application process, you had to list all your exhibitions that you participated in. I had to go back to the records and look. And I said, oh, my God. You know, it was two pages long. <laughs> Single space, two pages long. <laughs> so I had to really go back and 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 weed, you know, and edit some of that out. So for a, the, the one reason I went that way also was the traditional exhibitions. And because of COVID, this really took off when, with, uh, with COVID, these online, but now there things are opening up and I'm, I'm on a mailing list. I get artist calls for, you know, all across the country and all around the world, you know, for, for different uh, exhibitions. The traditional galleries, you know, the, they've got the requirements for uh, the size and the framing and then the application fee and the date when you have to ship it to them. And then, and Diane. I think that's why I don't do it. It's because I, it's so much yeah. work. I'd just rather paint. <laughs> all said and done, how much did that cost you to participate in that, that uh, show in uh, Charleston, I think it was? It was probably I don't I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but it was probably well between getting a really good frame and the shipping, it was probably close to five hundred dollars. And you had was that one or thereabouts or back and forth. Um, yeah, it was probably another hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, something somewhere around there. I mean, it was you know it was expensive. It could get rather expensive on the traditional way and. <laughs> I do not, I'm just not economic. It's not economically feasible for me. But the online exhibitions, the online gal galleries, the, some of them, the application fees are $20, $15, or $30. And then they have requirements of how you have to prepare the specifications for how your images are prepared and labeled and sent in. And that's it. <laughs> And you, of course, and it's all traditional. You have to have an artist statement. You have to tell them about the artwork. I mean, there's, you know, all just like as if it was a physical gallery, except for you don't have the cost of packaging the, the work up and send And all of, there's not a single online gallery that charges the commission. All of them, they tell you, is if, if your work is sold, somebody wants to buy your work, they arrange the deal, but they take zero commission. So that, that's another side you know side benefit as to where more traditional gar gallery it's 20 percent 30 percent well Clyde, it wouldn't hurt you to join the um 40 or 50 percent america thing do what what'd you say i said it wouldn't hurt you to join the oil painters of america i mean it's I've, just to have your name in there with them yeah i've looked, I've looked. i, I want to join but then i you know i the i was all Going home for joining, but then I got under the weather this last year. Yeah, I've looked into it, but uh, I'm not ready yet. They're, they're All right. well, you know, when you're ready, you know, but but uh, um, well, it's it is seventy dollars to be a member of Well Painters of America, and you have to get you have to submit your paintings, I forget how many, and they you know they they jury you into it, so it's not just a membership you can just join, yeah. Uh, I wanted to do that, but I got, you know. There's another national organization called, called the, um, it, it, called NOPES, uh, the National Oil Painters. Oil and Acrylic. Yeah. And I've, I've been invited to join them. And in fact, I entered in one of their, they, they have 
traditional uh, shows and they, they have online shows. And I entered one of my pieces in their online show, which is how I got invited, you know, to, uh, to join them. But they're like $50 a year or whatever, but uh, I'm, I'm not quite ready to make that, that commitment. My whole point is not to be bragging. I'm bringing this up to artists out there who are wanting to start an art career but they look at all those other areas which are actually handicaps. They look at there's either there's no gallery, physical guys in their area, or if there is, are uh, there is a and I. I it, it, well, this if no, if nothing else, the p- pandemic has taught a lot of people a very valuable lesson, and that is there are multiple ways to deal with everything now. Yeah. And a lot of these galleries that were not online are online now <laughs> because they had to get on they had to scurry when this happened yeah. and get online and get seen because you know they didn't want to be a part of the online thing but all of a sudden if they had to sink or swim and they had to get online to be a part of it yeah a lot of them sank because they didn't do it yeah you know they got they've closed doors yeah <clears throat> but that i mean it was sink or swim and get online it, it was either, you know, get online and swim or sink. And the point that I want to make is that that is my path. It has worked for me. It may yeah. not work for everybody. I but- mean, when that happened, I thought to myself, good gracious, thank <clears throat> goodness we have been working all this time on, on the social media, the uh, online things that we have been working on online as far as, as long as we have because. Absolutely. You know. So um, a couple of the other things on that webinar, Paul talked about uh, uh, grants and I'm, and uh, getting uh, residencies, yeah, residencies and, and sponsorship. So, uh, mm-hmm. have, who uh, have you tried any residencies or? or I think I'm a little low for that. I haven't done any. Um, I, I would like to, but I, I, it's hard for me to get away from here because of, you know I live on a farm. So I have yeah, farm animals to take too. care of, and when you other, got so many other critters to watch after, it's kind of hard to to do something. Yeah, like other that. responsibilities. So it's not like I can just um, let, pick up and go for a, a week or a month or two months. I suppose they're going to let me haul my chickens with me either. <laughs> 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 they're not going to let me take my donkeys and my chickens. <laughs> yeah, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's great for um, people that are trying to get established, like, or they've just gotten out of school, or right, you know. Right. Or if somebody have, who's they don't have a city. job where they're, yeah. you know, they don't have to worry about taking the time it off. It might be good for you, Claude. I mean. <laughs> well, it's it's a thing that I'm, you know, I. I it, you could give that serious thought. I mean. Back of my mind, it certainly is as a, yeah, as, as a uh, something, something more likely to happen in the future, you know. Yeah. As long as I. I mean, have, uh, you can know, Uber ride there. <laughs> Take your art supplies and just, yeah. get it, you know. Well, if I got access to the internet, I could because I had the responsibilities of running my internet radio station. Right. So that yeah, you know, I have to have internet access. You know, to mm-hmm. that's that's a full time job. I mean, yeah, you know, every other day uh, preparing the radio shows and curating the shows and then uploading them to the server and then programming and I mean that's that's a, a you know a task that I do in between you know working on art <laughs> so, i mean you already have you know some of the people supply meals some of the people you know you instant cart now you just have to drop your feet off like you know what are you what are you trying to push me out of the house <laughs> <laughs> hey you don't live here <laughs> at my house i mean you know it's you're trying to push me out of my house. <laughs> well, you might you might end up someplace where you can you know not be so not be uh, you can be in a in a an atmosphere that's uh, more conducive to be plein air painting or something. I mean, it you know just I think worth, residencies worth are looking. Yeah, I think residencies are really great because you do take kind of step out of your own life for a while. Yeah, and you're in a place where you don't have to worry about you know, all the family stuff or anything else, all you're, all you're thinking about is your artwork and you can get an an enormous amount of work done that way. Yeah. You're not worrying about bills or, or 
what stuff that's going on around you that you have to worry about normally. It's just, and then there's probably, you know, you can just step out and go plein air painting or something. Usually it's just, uh, I don't know, don't they have them on campuses or something? I don't, from what there's I There's all different kinds. Yeah. There's yeah. lots of different kinds. Different kinds, yeah. But um, anyhow, I, I wanted to share, I, you know, and I, sh I shared those links for some, for folks. It, that's my village. That's that's where I have found the success. And the thing about it is, uh, if uh, you know, I sell art sometimes, but I certainly don't sell enough of it to make a living at it, be self sufficient. But in between selling art, uh, preparing artwork, and entering in these in these uh, exhibitions, and that, and then when I get award something, that's a nice spirit lifting, ego boosting moment. <laughs> You know, it really uh, and, and it's validation, and it's always nice to be validated for something you've worked so hard on. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, see, because they're online, and they have, all of them they have archives. So uh, when you do, if you go to Google and you type in Clyde J. Kale artists, I'm everywhere. Not just my own sites. I mean, I'm on all these other people's you know sites too, and that's that's part of getting established as an artist. Yeah. Be found on Google. They got to find you on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the end, that's that's a village that worked for me. Like I said, it may not work for everybody, but uh, these are resources that are easily accessible, very economical, especially when you don't have any money to go the traditional route, and or you just don't have the community in the area, and or you're not the real social type, or you don't. You don't, and that this is a big thing that always upsets me or irritates me rather than upset. It just irritates me is that if you don't travel in the higher social economic circles, you know, you're not with the toady hodies, you know, you're, you're, so funny. you know, if you're walking into some place, you know, say, well, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's sad, but people make you feel, you know, people, they have a tendency. We have clicks, you know, if you're not part of a click, well, then as a starting artist, you start, oh, I ain't got a chance. No, you have a chance. You can forge your own path. You can create your own art career and you can do it in multiple, multiple ways. And like Paul Klein says, you got to be creative. You're creative already. Why not be creative about how to, how to uh, pursue your career? So I think we'll we'll end with that. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 103 for June the 28th. And my name is Clyde J. Kill. I've been jabbering the most, and I'm here with <laughs> Diane Hunt and Constance Constant. And I'm going to say goodnight to Diane and Constance. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. I second that. Thank you so much for listening. And that'd be it until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.com dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.